started, uh, we'd like to welcome Joaquin Neiman into the interview room at the Genesis Invitational. Um, Joaquin, uh, last time we saw you was at the Sony Open in Hawaii. You collected your second consecutive runner-up on the PGA Tour. Um, just a comment on the state of your game right now, coming into the week. Yeah, I was had two great weeks in Hawaii, and I decided to to take some time off. Uh, I wanted to go back to Chile, see my family, see my friends, so I, I decided to take four weeks off and then start here in LA. And I think it was the right decision. I had a great time back in Chile and then I had a great time also in, in Jupiter, uh, practicing with my coach. So yeah, I feel ready for this week and always happy to be back in, in competition. And as we look forward to the rest of the season, I'm just curious if those two runner-up finishes uh, you know, changed any of your goals throughout the rest of the season that you may have set for yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, after those two great weeks, I, I put myself and I can tell myself that I, I, I can always do better, uh, that I can win, I can win any tournament if I play great. So yeah, I mean, I just, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, I felt great the way I, the way I play and also on the back nine on, on, in Hawaii, knowing that I was leading. So that everything helps for for the future, getting more experience. And yeah, I mean, I know that if I'm in that position again, I, I can always do better. And uh, as we look ahead to this week, um, what are your uh, thoughts on Riviera Country Club and uh, how you feel like you'll play this week? Yeah, this is one of my favorite weeks. I mean, it's. It's LA. LA is always nice to be. Uh, course is awesome. It's one of my favorites on tour, and yeah, I mean it's always nice to to have a smaller field. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of fun to be here. It's a good course. Uh, yeah, we, it's, it's gonna be a fun tournament, and and hopefully have a good week too. All right. With that, we will uh, open it up to questions. Um, if you have a question, please type your name into the comment uh, section in the teams. Yeah, we will start with Doug Ferguson of the Associated Press. Marco, um, two things. What, what, uh, what kind of schedule do you have going forward to the Masters? Yeah, I'm going to play for sure. I'm going to play next week. And then I'm playing players and on the Classic. And, and maybe and, and match play after. So yeah, I mean, those, those five for sure. And maybe someone or somewhere else, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. Okay, is it is it more difficult to um, to to get the right amount of golf in going into the Masters in a year like this? Yeah, I think it's. Without being too much. I yeah, I mean I I always like to play two or three weeks in a row max. Uh, and yeah, I think I I don't know if I play better, but I feel better playing my first or my first two weeks. After that, I feel a little tired. Like I. I don't put I don't put much attention on, on my golf, so yeah, I think the first two weeks is is like where where I like to play my best. Okay, I'll come back later. Thanks. Uh, question from Daniel Rappaport, Golf Digest. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, hey Joaquin, I'm curious. What is your experience level uh, growing up with Kakuya, the grass, and and what is the key uh, to playing out at Kakuya, especially kind of around the greens and the rough? Yeah, there is one course in Chile where, uh, which I like a lot. Uh, it's same as grass as here, not not as not as good though. But yeah, and yeah, it's it's a, it's a little different. You you get a lot of spin on 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 the wedges with this grass, and also these greens are are it, sometimes it get really tricky. Now right now they're super fast and they got a lot of slopes. So so yeah, I think it's. I gotta, I gotta be careful with where I lead the ball. I just try to put up here every time, and I think I could have a good week doing that. <laughs> so you're saying it's, it spins a lot with the wedges from the fairway, or, or around the green when it kind of sits on top like that? Yeah, it's a, a lot of time it sits on top, and yeah, around the green you can, you can hit a lot of spin, and yeah, especially from 100 to 100 in, is you can get more spin on on this grass. Ferguson. Go ahead, Deb. Sorry, I'll go ahead. Two very different, strange questions. Um, <laughs> do, do, do you consider yourself um, one of the best players in the world? Uh, if so, why? And if you don't, what else do you need to do to be looked upon that way? Yeah, I think if 
if I'm playing my, my good golf, if I'm playing one of my best golf, I think I'm one of the best players in the world for me. I mean, I, I need to have that confidence on myself and I, and I know that if I'm playing my best golf, I, I can win anywhere. Okay, and secondly, and this one's even worse. Um, <laughs> if if they did not have the Latin American Championship, what what path would you have taken? It's a or good question. Right I remember being, yeah, that was two or three years ago, and yeah, I mean, I was probably gonna turn pro and try to go to the web.com. I remember I played the Q school like. December, that was like two months before the Latin America. And I mean, I, I decided that if I, if I got in straight away, I was gonna just turn pro or maybe wait and see if, if I win the Latin America. But yeah, I mean, if I didn't have that tournament, I, I'll probably just turn pro before that. And I was probably playing web.com and then who knows, you know? But yeah, I mean, I just wait for the Latin America. I won, I got to get into the master, which I, I think it was really helpful for, for my career, for my future. I got a lot of experience in, in that week and I think without the Latin America I wouldn't be on the master and without the master maybe I wouldn't be here right now. So so it was everything like connected. So I think Latin America was really helpful for, for to grow the game in in other region. And a sixty three on the last day, right? That that helps too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what, how did you do in Q school? In I remember I remember I played Q school, I didn't play great. I I think I got a little status, but I I was probably gonna turn pro and go maybe try some Mondays and get into one event and play good and hopefully get get it going from there. But yeah, I think I took a better decision. Thank you for, for the Latin America. <laughs> and did, did any colleges offer you a scholarship? Yeah, I was I was close to going to school but I like it was it was not really I was not really interested on it. I, I think at the at the moment, <laughs> at the moment I just wanted to play golf and yeah, I just decided with my whole team that I, I got more to lose if I was going to school because that moment I was number one in the world. So I decided I think this is the perfect moment to just turn pro and, and try it out. What's your glasses? Next we will go to Mark Canizaro, the New York Post. Mark, what's the Hey, working. I've got a couple of questions. Um, the first of which is, is where are you, where are you at right now with the fundraising project for your little cousin? And has the procedure been done? Um, and you know, where is that at right now? Yeah, so it's, it's been amazing the last couple of days. Uh, uh, Rafita got to to get the chance. Uh, got his father got the we got the whole money for for the for the medicine and and he he bought it couple couple of weeks ago and. He had to go to the, I think he bought it on, here in the States and he had to fly here, not Rafita, his father, go get the medicine and then bring it back to Chile. And Rafita got the medicine a couple of days ago, which it was amazing. Uh, and more than that, it was, I think it was more amazing to see the, like the whole tour, the whole, like all the people that was supporting me, all the companies, uh, it was, it was amazing. I mean, we, we got, we've, we raised so much money in such a short period, which it was really amazing and gave us a lot of uh, faith for, for Rafita, you know? And yeah, I mean, right now he's, he's he just been a couple of days where, where he got the medicine, but yeah, I think right now he's doing great. It's been a couple of days we, where he has been in the, in the hospital, like waiting how he reacts because of the medicine. And yeah, I mean, he, they sent me some pictures these couple of days and he looks, he looks stronger, he looks happy, so it's, it's really amazing what everybody did those couple of months and to raise the, that m so much money. Did you, you uh, I, I, what is specifically your relationship, like what's the actual relationship in terms of, you know, on your parents' mm -hmm. side or whatever? So my, uh, Rafita's dad is my mother's, uh, how do you say, prim primo, uh, cousin? No, no, yeah, cousin. So it's, it's really close from, for my mom, so, which is for me too. So yeah, we're, we're, we're close. I mean, I remember I grew up with, with his father, who is Felipe. I, I grew up with him a lot. He helped me a lot. He, he came and watched me some golf tournaments. He went for the master when I played as an amateur. So yeah, we, we got a great relationship. And, 
and now having Rafida with us is, is amazing too, G giving him a, a mulligan. <laughs> Yeah. I remember at the beginning when every when he was born everybody of course was super happy. We didn't know he would have uh, this type of diagnostic of, of uh, uh SMA and yeah once I remember I was my mother told me like yeah hey, he Rafida might have some really hard disease and but they were not hundred percent sure yet and once we get the the news it was it was a little shocking at the beginning like I like I, at the beginning I, I didn't believe it was true and then a couple of days after I I call him I call Felipe I call to see Rafida and yeah it was it was a really hard moment they were crying I, I was crying too and it it was tough but. Yeah, I mean, after that, I think it, it was really helpful to to keep, like, being positive, you know. I remember I was calling Felipe and he was really negative and, like, oh, what happened this to me? And, you know, just just being negative and I was trying to push him up at being more positive and, and I get to help him on, on here in the States because in Chile it was, it was, it was really hard to get the two million dollars and... And for me, being here, getting more connections, you know, social media, all the stuff helps, and it was, it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> now that we got it done. You obviously, you know, had a huge disappointment with COVID, not getting into the Masters, which, which I'm sure was devastating to you. What was that like for you? And was maybe looking at, you know, Rafita's situation, maybe even his perspective to that, to some degree, like, you know, I'll have another chance, you know, at this. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's nothing compared to that. I mean, it's something is between life and just getting into another tor golf tournament. And yeah, I mean, I just look at it that way. I mean, just, I just look at it like it was just another tournament. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I know that I was going to be there in April, so it wasn't like really hard for me at, at, at the beginning. But it was, I was really looking forward to play. I was playing great golf there. So yeah, I mean, it was, it was a little hard, but then it was fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a great week this week. Thank you. Uh, Dana Rappaport, Golf Digest. Go ahead. Well, uh, Joaquin, how, how popular is golf in Chile? Did you have any friends that played golf growing up? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not big. I mean, I remember growing up and it was, I was lucky to be living right next to a golf course that it wasn't like a big golf course. I mean, it was one of the smallest ones in around the city, but uh, yeah, there were not many kids of my age playing golf. I, I remember I, <laughs> every weekend I had to go out there and play with my dad and my dad's father and my my dad's friends. They're, they were all old for me, you know, it wasn't fun for me. So, so yeah, I mean, there, there were not many kids and now and now it's, it's amazing how many kids you see when you go to a golf course. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, you, I think you see more kids than all people playing right now in in Chile. He's he's been growing up a lot, which is nice to see. Yeah, I had to play a lot with my dad growing up too. <laughs> but, I mean, how, how important is that for you though to to grow to grow golf in Chile? It's, I think it's huge. I mean, I I had the chance when I was probably 10, 12 to to play with professional golfers. Uh, from Chile, which I, which when I was 12 years old, I was looking at them like they were gods, you know. I mean, it was it was amazing, and I had the chance to play with them, practice with them, which it was amazing. And and every time I go back to Chile, I try to do almost the same. I mean, I try to go back to Chile and and see all the kids that work in in the same academy as I do with my coach. And yeah, it just it just it's, it's a lot of fun. I go out with them. I, we have lunch. We we play a couple of holes. We do putting contests. And yeah, I think I, and I I think it's part of my job doing that to grow up the game in, in Chile. Cool. Thanks a lot. All right. At this time, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Armand to discuss the Chile Masters Championship. Hello, Armand. Hello, Armand. Hello, Armand. Hello, Armand. Hello, Armand. Hello, Armand. Hello, Muchas gracias a, a ti por el tiempo y a los medios que nos están acompañando. 
Y de entrada, quisiéramos que nos contaras un poquito de en qué estado está el tema de Salud con Charrapita. Sí, eh, bien, so, o sea, este último día ha sido súper bueno. Eh, Rafita pudo tener su medicamento y se lo pusieron a su día un par de días y recién hoy salió del hospital ya que se sentía obviamente le pusieron una inyección muy fuerte y, y los primeros días estaba un poco con fiebre, se estaba vomitando pero ya, ya logró salir del hospital, ahora se siente súper bien, puede tomar leche de, de la mamá así que nada, los avances han sido increíbles y, y él ahora está súper está bien de iniciar esta campaña, quién es Rafita, ahorita lo explicabas en pies, pero para uh -huh. que sí. un poquito de cómo nació esta iniciativa. Sí, Rafita es el hijo del primo de mi mamá, eh, lo cual es muy cercano para mí también, somos, desde que yo tengo, desde que yo nací, conozco a Felipe, que, que es el papá de Rafita, y Felipe me ha acompañado, me acompañó el máster hace, cuando, hace dos años cuando era amateur, eh, me acompañaba cuando chico a los torneos y... Y nada, hace un par de, par de meses tuvieron un hijo que es Rafita y, a la, y tuvimos suerte de que, de que se dieron cuenta de que fue diagnosticado con esta enfermedad a, la, a, un, a un par de semanas, creo, a, a un par de días de haber nacido. Y eso nos dio tiempo para pa, claro, empezar a movernos, empezar a ser positivos, de que, de que se podía lograr, porque casi que lo veíamos imposible juntar 2.1 millones, millones de dólares en, en casi nada de tiempo. Y al principio fue, fue difícil, pero pasando el tiempo nos dimos cuenta que la gente nos iba ayudando, eh, íbamos juntando mucho dinero, y, pero claro, es tan al, tan, tanto dinero que, que se nos hacía cada noche más difícil. Y llegando acá a Estados Unidos, empezando los torneos, decidí empezar a donar un poco eh, con las bolsas de premios que yo, los torneos que jugaba, haciendo verdis, águilas, todo eso. Y también, o sea, la gente se empezó a acercar, mucha gente donó, muchos golfistas donaron. Eh, en México fue una de las semanas que creo que juntamos más dinero, eh, ya que Unifin, uno de los auspiciadores de México, se pusieron con harto, harto, harto dinero para pa ayudar a Rafita. Eh, también varios mis auspiciadores aportaron. Entonces fue, fue muy lindo ver cómo todo todos se juntaron y se, se involucraron en, en el tema de Rafita. Bueno, ¿hay bien de, del tour algún amigo golpista dentro de la gira que te haya apoyado? Que sé que a través de redes sociales fue muy fuerte la, la promoción de, de la campaña. ¿Quiénes, ¿Quiénes se vincularon con más fuerza? Para, para Yo creo que los más cercanos acá en, en Estados Unidos, o sea, todos los golfistas, varios golfistas me ayudaron, o sea, las redes sociales siento que ayudan mucho hoy en día y esa era una de, mi, de las formas en las que yo podía aportar más. Eh, estando acá cada semana, siendo televisado, siendo comentar más del tema. Y claro, o sea, varios golfistas, todos tienen varios seguidores y me ayudaron a compartir, a, a difundir el, el GoFundMe que hice para salvar a Rafita. Y la verdad que los primeros días fue increíble como la cuenta iba subiendo muy rápido y... Y, y eso, o sea, fue, fue, fue muy lindo. Perfecto. Eh, una última pregunta. Esta semana, ¿cómo te sientes para, para el torneo que arranca ya el jueves? Eh, un, campo, un torneo que el año pasado no pasaste, pasaste el corte, pero bueno, eh, este año me imagino que con muchas ganas de revancha y marzo después de la buena actuación que tuviste en Hawái. Bien, me siento jugando bien. Eh, después de dos semanas buenas en Hawái, después par de semanas de descanso, me, me siento muy bien, practiqué mucho la semana pasada con mi entrenador y, y el juego está donde queremos que esté, eh, muy cómodo, pateando bien, es una cancha difícil, lo cual hay que, hay que ser paciente, pero, pero bien, en general me siento en todas las áreas del juego muy, muy bien. Perfecto, gracias Paco. Dale. Que estén bien. Igual, nos vemos. Perfect. Thank you.